Okay, well, I'd, I'd like to, to welcome you uh, today, <coughs> excuse me, uh, for, this, uh, for this presentation and talk, <coughs> and like to thank the, who all came out in this incredible Washington snowstorm uh, and still managed to get here. Uh, <coughs> hopefully, you'll be able to get home. Uh, and uh, today, uh, the, the title is Chutbah and Chutzpah, Islamophobia on the Internet uh, by Daniel Verisco. Uh, those of you who aren't aware of it, among other things, he did a very good piece uh, in the Mesa Bulletin, uh, which uh, it shows you how far behind I am. The way I discovered the piece was I was reading it in my study, and it's, what, two years old now, three years? I thought it was the latest issue. So thank God I didn't throw it out. I thought, oh, this is a really interesting study. So, um, um, uh, Daniel Versco is the professor of anthropology at Ho Hofstra University and is the president of the Yemen Studies Association. What's the official? American Institute for Yemeni Studies. Ah, okay, American Institute for Yemeni Studies. Um, uh, he, he does many things, but I asked him in particular um, to really uh, work off uh, the piece that he uh, did in the Mesa Bulletin. Um, uh, I won't go into the reasons why, maybe in the Q&A I will, but there were uh, aspects of it that I thought were uh, uh, quite unique, and uh, I'm delighted you could make it, and um, uh, we look forward to your talk, and usually we go for about no more than, the whole program usually goes for no more than an hour and a half, sometimes less than that. So we'll have a presentation, and then we'll have a, um, a, a Q&A. Okay. All right, Welcome. cool. Thank you, John, and uh, thank all of you for coming out on this snowy day. Uh, we have snow in New York as well, uh, but uh, we're generally a little bit uh, uh, used to it. Up there. Uh, is, is this visible, or do we need to maybe put one of the lights off? Can people see it okay? How's that? That's a little better. It works a little better. In touch yes. Um, so well, I'm at the eye doctor when you do that. Right. Your eye. How is that? Can you see it? Okay. okay. Um, I have a handout. Um, I think there's some copies there if people didn't uh, get it. Uh, because a number of the websites I'll be talking about and some of the resources, um, I just thought it would be easier if you had them rather than trying to write them down. But obviously during the question and answer period, um, you know, feel free to, uh, to ask me about any of the items that we're covering uh, today. And, um, I thought the best way to do this was to I'm get in your way, so um, was to, I, I like PowerPoint um, for the images. I'm not a great fan of putting a lot of quotes up, although once in a while it's useful to have a quote too if you take part. part. Um, as you can see in that photograph over there, uh, that, that, that cartoon over there from the New York Review of Books, 1974, um, Islamophobia has been around for a very long time. Um, I thought I would take you through five points today. Uh, the first, what is Islamophobia? Okay, may seem obvious, but perhaps it's worth taking a look at that word and, and what people think about it. Uh, second point, Islamophobia is not new. It hasn't been without its critics. If you look up there in the right-hand corner, that, of course, was the famous... Can you raise your voice a little bit? Sure. Thanks. Should I use this, or...? I'll just talk louder. How's that? Right. Yeah. Uh, if you look up there in the right-hand corner, that's the famous Captain John Smith. Um, how many of you were aware that before he came to the United States and had that memorable meeting with Pocahontas for the sake of Disney, that in fact he had been fighting against the Ottomans? Anyone aware of that? And he was known for killing, as you can see, what, one of the images in his life story here, uh, killing the Pasha, all right? So, you know, this connection between the United States goes, before we were even in the United States, um, goes back a long ways in terms of, of how Islam was being perceived. Then we'll look a little bit at surfing the Islamophobic turf. Um, and then I thought I would do a little fallacy watch, sort of in opposition to uh, a website some of you may have seen called Jihad Watch. I thought we'd do fallacy watch. And then finally, a Minbar Manifesto. So that, that's where we're going to go in, in the next few minutes here. So what is Islamophobia? There, there are a number of, of definitions out there. Um, the Runnymede uh, Trust Report from 1991 has been widely quoted. Um, it's one of the sort of earlier studies. It was done in England. 
Um, and I, I think it has a, a rather nice ring to it, unfounded hostility towards Muslims and therefore fear or dislike of all or most Muslims. I, I, I like the ring of this. I think it, you know, if you just say, well, it's, it's fear of Islam, I'm not quite sure what that means. Uh, it's a bit general. Uh, this tries to pinpoint it a little more. Uh, there are several books uh, out, and apparently a, an author of, of one of them uh, is, is here today, if I understand John correctly. But a book that I, I find just fascinating is by Peter uh, Gottschalk and Gabrielle Greenberg um, on Islamophobia. And what they do is go through um, political cartoons um, and, and show how the political cartoons, of course, they lampoon everyone, uh, but particularly because often if you look at a political cartoon, it really does go to where the stereotype is. That's the, the really good ones, you know, really show you what people are thinking out there. Um, and so they had this quote here, and I mean, you can read it on your own, but I, I also like what they said. In, in fact, what we're dealing with is a social anxiety. Most of the people who are Islamophobic probably have never met a Muslim, don't really know a Muslim, right? It's a social anxiety. Uh, and I think we'll keep that in the back of our mind as we go along here. Uh, and, and they have an interesting project. I think the people in this room, we wouldn't need to do it, but y y you might think about doing it if you teach with your students or, or even at a party sometime. Uh, and that is, right, you know, have people write down what comes to mind when they think of the, the term uh, Islamophobia. Um, I think the picture over there shows a number of of, uh, of, of words or issues that, that would, would come to people's minds. Um, it's always a very interesting thing to do, is to put a word up. Um, how many are professors here? Any teachers here? Okay, right? Do you ever do that? You just put a word up and, and ask students for what, it, I mean, you put up religion, you put up Islam, or you put up Muhammad and say, write down five things that come to your mind. It's a great way to, to sort of find out where peop what people are thinking about. Um, so, Islamophobia is not new. Um, if you, and, and here we are at a, at a, at a Catholic university before, uh, the, I don't know whether there are any courses here on the Venerable Bede. I was never quite sure what made him venerable. I guess he was old and he wrote very early, 8th century. Um, he's known mainly for his discussion of, of the church in the early uh, history of the church in England. Uh, but he talked about the Saracens and he was pretty close to some of the battles that had come up, uh, not all the way to England, obviously. And he referred to them as a very sore plague. Okay? For anyone who's interested in sort of the medieval uh, response to uh, Islam, I, th there are a number of books out there, but the best in my mind is by John Tolan. It's called Saracen. Um, and it, it, it is a, a, a remarkable study. John is currently in Paris and runs a, a, an organization that looks at, at, at minorities. Um, within, within the Islamic world. So, I mean, you could trace through uh, a, a lot of history. Um, I thought I would just take one out. Um, I'm sure everyone here has, if you've been through a, a college education or even a high school education, you have read your Dante, perhaps not in the original Italian, um, but from Dante's Inferno, which is the uh, early 14th century when it was first published. Um, this is in reference to the trip down through the various levels of hell, and um, we find all sorts of individuals there, including Muhammad. And this was Muhammad's fate, not a very picturesque one. Um, although here is one from the same century, an illustration where Muhammad is being basically gutted and then put back and then gutted. Um, not a very pleasant situation. Um, this is a film I have not seen. I don't know, John, have you ever seen this film? It's something I really want to find. Maybe it's probably on YouTube. I just need to look. Uh, but it apparently was a silent film from 1911, an Italian silent film, on the Inferno, where they actually show Muhammad. Okay, this might this would be fascinating. I, I'm, I'm, if anyone has anyone ever seen this? Okay, I just found out about it and I was amazed by it. Um, and then uh, for any of you who have uh, uh, teenage kids or, or about to be teenage. They probably know Dante's Inferno. It's a video game. It, it's a takeoff on Dante's Inferno. They decided, and I'm sure it wasn't because they would want it to be PC. They're probably Mac as well. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, they, they removed Muhammad altogether uh, in this particular uh, video game. Um, 
there are also some positive uh, aspects. This is from a treaty uh, that was signed in 1797. Some of you may be familiar with the, the phrasing here. Um, and this was, you know, with the, 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 the Barbary states um, where we were doing a, a lot of trade and our American ships were certainly coming through the Mediterranean. The uh, key phrase here being that the United States is not founded on, I don't know, a lot of Tea Party people here would probably be, uh, be jumping in, in, in the Boston Harbor at this moment. Um, however, uh, that we were not founded as a Christian religion and we in the United, United States have no, in, it in itself has no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims. Right? Fascinating. Um, and this was the actual uh, treaty that was signed. Would have been nice if that had been followed through. However, a very, you know, economics is always in there somewhere. Um, by 1800, 20% of the U.S. government annual revenues, 20%, were going to pay ransoms for ships, American ships, that were being taken by pirates along the Barbary Coast. Um, and that's why we had the famous Barbary War that gives us the Marine Hymn from the shores of Montezuma, I mean from the halls of Montezuma, sorry, to the shores of Tripoli. Um, so, you know, yes, there was this wonderful statement in a treaty that the United States is nothing against Islam, um, but we weren't too happy about our midshipmen uh, being uh, taken. A fascinating novel. If you've never read it, I, I really recommend it. it it's, you can get it on, on, online in a number of sources, and, and it's been reprinted. Uh, Royal Tyler, The Algerine Captive, um, one of the earlier uh, novels written in America. It's a splendid example of that, but it deals with this very issue of, of the Barbary pirates. And this is a line that's put into one of the, the Muslims, uh, one of the characters in there, but I thought it was just so remarkable, um, a statement. Uh, I mean, you know, it, this is from a character. I mean, whether it was the actual opinion of Royal Tyler, I, I, have, I really don't know. Um, but particularly when you get down to the, and I thought it was an appropriate statement for this particular venue. Um, if each would follow the obvious dictates of his own scriptures, he would cease to hate, abominate, and destroy the other. If you're looking for a new quotation, John, I think you might want to mm. might want to do something with uh, Royal Tyler uh, and what he says here. Um, well, there's been a lot of interaction not only with real Muslims but with purported Muslims. I suppose I could use the term. Um, you're probably aware that when uh, the Mormons, now called the Latter-day Saints, um, but in their early days they were called Mormons, uh, and still called that by many people, um, that, that they were not very well respected. Um, they were hounded out of New York. The, 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 uh, um, Joseph Smith um, was eventually killed. The Book of Mormon, they, they believe, was, was revealed by the angel Moroni, uh, in 1823. By 1831, he was being called the Ontario Muhammad, the Ontario Muhammad. Um, and so you have, and you know, they authorize polygamy. <laughs> and so it's not surprising, and here's an early uh, uh, anti-Mormon book by a man named Henry Caswell, um, that they were associating Mormonism as a type of Islam, right? Um, as, a, as a cult. Uh, that had nothing to do with Christianity. So, very interesting when you look at perceptions of Islam and, and fear, social anxiety, uh, in terms of, of our country. So, here's, we're in Washington. How many of you have ever been in the Supreme Court building and seen this freeze? Who are they? One is supposed to be the puppet. Yes, the one in the middle. Yeah. And then you have Augustine. Uh, I mean, Justinian on the right, and um, I think this is Charlemagne. Am I correct? Yeah. Um, in the Supreme Court building, we have Muhammad as a lawgiver. Interesting. Um, so let's go to surf the Islamophobic turf. Um, you probably are aware that there are a number of sites out there which... Um, despite sometimes they have disclaimers, sometimes they don't even bother with disclaimers, um, are, are Islamophobic. Um, 
Jihad Watch by Robert Spencer is one we'll look at in a moment. I Love Answering Islam. It's called A Christian Muslim Dialogue, but it's a monologue. There's no dialogue whatsoever. You can't even respond to things that they put on the website. Uh, and they pull all sorts of, of, of anti-Islamic uh, statements, you know, books written by missionaries back a hundred years ago. It's, it's sort of an interesting site to surf. Um, we're going to go into Chick in a moment. Uh, there's one called Vimitude. They have an attitude. Uh, and then there's the Clarion Project. Um, and I, I, I thought it's fascinating, again, challenging extremism, promoting dialogue. An interesting combination of, of, of phrases there. So let's start with Jack Chick, and you will see in a moment why at this Catholic uh, venue um, I thought it would be appropriate to start with uh, Jack Chick. First of all, how many have ever heard of Jack Chick? Oh, well, you are about to be enlightened, my friend. Okay, www.chick.com. You can't forget that one, all right? This is the Mad Magazine. I'm ba dating myself. When I was a kid, there was something called Mad Magazine, and it had really good comics in it. Um, he could have been one of their best artists. Uh, but he is a, an ardent Christian fundamentalist who hates communists, hates Catholics, hates Muslims, and puts them all in one group because they're all satanic, you see. Now, his tracks are available in multi-languages. They're available in Arabic. They're available in Swahili. These are ones who are attacking Islam. These are tracks. Uh, and then you see here, new tracks for Muslims. Uh, he had a, a, a very popular one called Your Best Life. Um, and I was telling John, when I was young, I grew up in a very fundamentalist Baptist church in Ohio, and we had Jack Chick tracks, right? They were hot. They were the, the best thing going out there. Um, and as you can see there, there this image, uh, I hope I can cross over the bridge to Mohammed. It will not be what you expect, okay? And this one you can also get in English and Spanish in addition to the, the Arabic version. Well, I thought I would take you through, and I'll pass it around for you. If, you. if you read Italian or French, you can actually read the whole thing online. The English one, you can only read part of it, otherwise you have to buy the comic book to the series called the Alberto series. This is Mohammed standing there with his scimitar um, and over on the right, um, and we'll go through, okay, well, I'll, I, I won't uh, wait too long to tell you that, and I'll show you because Jack Chick will provide the evidence, um, if you were aware or not, um, Islam is actually a Catholic plot. Okay? Um, and here is a, um, an image over here of probably a, an image of Muhammad and Khadija that um, is rare. I, I, I don't know of any other, any other image like that. Um, but as you can see, she was said to be a nun and a faithful Roman Catholic. This is Khadija. And uh, she was given a task to find a brilliant young man, could be used by the Vatican, um, to become a messiah for the children of Ishmael. And she found Muhammad. So this all goes back to a fellow named Alberto Rivera, who looks a little bit like Gerardo Rivera, um, <laughs> and is just a little bit wack, he's even wackier than Gerardo Rivera. Uh, but basically, he is a, a, a he was a priest in Spain, who was if you read Italian up here, he was given access to he was told about secret documents in the Vatican. Do you have copies of those here, the secret documents in the Vatican? Oh, I'm sure we do. Yeah, probably somewhere. Because it's a Jesuit documents. school, we would have that. Yeah. <laughs> in the Vatican uh, that if they ever got out would be disastrous for both Islam and for Catholicism, right? Well, guess what? He found out about them. And basically, as you can see, the Vatican wanted to finance this, this the, 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 the Arab Muslims going into North Africa and retaking it for the Catholic Church because it, it, it wasn't in control of the Catholic Church. And so the three elements down there, uh, to get rid of the, the Jews and the, 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 the Christians who were, were not the right ones, um, and then also to uh, protect the, the, uh, um, the, 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 the property and, and that of the Catholic Church, and, and to uh, also bring Jerusalem back under the control 
Um, so we're switching now to, uh, to English. Not only was it a Catholic plot from the very beginning, um, but the Jesuits are involved because as you can see here, um, it was a Muslim who shot the Pope. Yeah. And that gave him something in common with President Reagan because they had both been shot and they became friends. So the Pope, John Paul II, received worldwide coverage and sympathy. And this is my favorite image panel in the entire comic book. And last of all, the blame could be put on the KGB, making the world believe that the communists are the Pope's enemies. It's a big game, Roscoe. Pope John Paul II has been a good communist for many years. <laughs> yes. Well, this is what's going to happen, you see. Uh, the Pope, and there's a lot more in the comic book, you know, you can, you can read it on your own. He's going to, uh, he's desperately trying to gain control of Jerusalem, um, and the Muslim world is going to help him do that. The last Pope, hopefully not the current one, I think he's too nice to be the Antichrist, but the last Pope will be the Antichrist, um, and um, as you can see, this is from Revelation 17, 16, the Muslim and communist armies, I guess Putin will still count in that regard, uh, will come to destroy Israel, they will be massacred, that was all predicted in Ezekiel, um, when he saw those wheels up there, and then Satan will plunge the world into the battle of Armageddon. Um, now, who is this tract for? If you think about it, if you're a Muslim or if you know of any Muslim, you know, the idea that they would actually be convinced by this is, you know, somewhere below zero, I think. Um, here's an example, right, of, of, of in, in what they always do in each of these, these individual tracts, and, and it's in the comic book as well. There's a plea to, to convert and how you can accept Jesus into your heart. Um, you know, and, and here we have, uh, uh, you know, these two, two Saudis, I guess, I don't know, trying to guess. Um, you know, realizing, oh my God, it's a false hope. Um, now, if you think this is just some crazy website, which it is, that no one pays attention to, well, guess what? Get out your iPhone, because there's an app in iTunes for a chick tract pack. Anyone wants to try it? They're welcome to uh, borrow my iPhone uh, later. Um, okay, let's go to one that's not religious, or at least not overtly religious. Um, and there are a number of sites out there. Um, a lot of them go back to this fellow Robert Spencer. There's also David Horowitz. You may have remembered the film Obsession, um, which came out in the, the first time that President Obama, that then Senator Obama was running for president. Um, now, Robert Spencer is... If you go to Amazon, this fellow has, has so many books. It's just amazing how much this fellow writes about Islam. I think that these particular um, titles give you some sense of where he's coming from. Um, he claims, of course, that he's not against Islam. He's only against militant Islam, although I think if you read that quote, it um, doesn't seem to be talking about militant Islam. It seems to be talking about all Islam. Um, now, I found out about, I mean, I knew I was coming to speak, but before anyone even sent me an announcement, he was surfing your site, mm. and he found that announcement, and he posted, I was the star of the day on February 12th on Jihad Watch, mm. and he actually sent me an email, and this is what he said, right, that, that he would be happy to come and debate me. Right, if I wanted a genuine discussion. Um, and then over here, this is from his, his post. He took a picture from my, my Hofstra website when I was in Yemen to make it make me look really bad. Okay, obviously one of them. But uh, I want to warn you in all fairness, because you know I'm trying to be fair here, that what he said is it's yet more evidence that our nation's universities, and I guess that includes Georgetown, are no longer interested in free inquiry and training students to be independent thinkers, but are instead pest holes 
of leftist indoctrination and propaganda. So, in in sense of fairness, I wanted to, to, to warn you that. I don't have any desire to debate Robert Spencer. If you want to see someone who does, is something called spencerwatch.com. Um, and when you realize who his friends are and who he who he talks with, um, you know, it sort of uh, it sort of tells you all you really need to know about this individual. However, his books are very prominent on Amazon. They're best-selling books. They're best-selling books. So just so you know what you know, we're up against. Um, fallacy watch. Um, so. I thought it was interesting to juxtapose these. This is on the right. I take it that was serious. I, I, when I first saw the one on the right, I thought, is this a joke? It's from George Washington University. Uh, and it says it was the Students for Conservative Fashion, Conservative Fashion Awareness, something like that. Was this for real? Yes. OK. It's one of those things where you look at it and you say, really? OK. Well, that was not too long ago. Uh, but you go back to 1956, reading the Arab mind, and uh, my goodness, that is about as contemporary as you can get in terms of, of where the stereotypes are out there. So let's go through some of the stereotypes. Um, you may remember in, in the, uh, the election back in 2008, the famous interchange between John McCain, and, and, and John McCain actually had a very good response where the woman says, well, I don't like Obama, he's an Arab. He's an Arab, I think is what yeah. she said. Right? An Arab, because he's a Muslim. And I, you know, I haven't seen the Pew poll on this, I don't know if they've asked this particular question, but I think if you were to ask it to most people, a very significant percentage would assume Arab, Muslim, mean the same thing. Um, and of course there are any number of, of ways in which that comes out, that your orders, your Arabia, about how um, you know, Muslims are taking over Europe. And then in 2015, next year, we will have the Islamic Republic of New Algeria, the Moorish Emirate of Iberia, and etc. cetera. Um, I want to go back to that election. Um, I run a blog. Um, there's about 12 of us on the blog. It's called Tafsir. It's on there. Um, I actually have a post today on Spongebob, okay, <laughs> which I'm not going to talk about. Um, but back in 2008, I w um, I, like a number of, uh, I think, of, of scholars, was very concerned about the, the statements that were being made that Obama was a Muslim, right? And I actually uh, put a page on the blog. Um, we, I ended up getting 150 scholars to sign it. Uh, many from the American Academy of Religion or from the American Anthropological Association, from MESA. Uh, and it, it, it's still up, actually. Uh, still up there. We had our statement about, about the election. We had resources about the false claim, resources on the Islamophobic film Obsession, uh, and recommended readings reading on the Islamic faith. Now, my blog doesn't get any of the uh, uh, number of hits uh, that um, the Islamophobic ones like Jihad Watch do. Uh, but at least it was, for many of us, a, a, an effort to say, we really think this is a problem. Uh, and I was very pleased to help put that together. Fallacy. Islam is evil and immoral at its core. Of course, Franklin Graham, the son of Billy Graham, who for many years did not behave like Billy Graham, mm. but then saw the light, um, you know, Islam is a very evil and wicked religion. Um, if you go on, I took it from a particular website, you can find the Islamic commandments that Muslims must follow. All right, and, and you know, you could look at each one of those and just realize the extent of misinformation uh, and, and, and just propaganda that is being fed out there. Um, and anyone who's interested, I can, if you email me or whatever, I can send you um, the link to that, that um, where it was. Um, Muhammad was a pedophile. Hear that all the time, and Islam is cruel to women. Um, mainly from, this was a site called Preach the Cross, that sort of gives you a sense where it's coming from, BibleProbe.com, um, that put up that, ver that picture, if you put into Google, that picture will come up probably 100,000 times. That is, 
That is a very popular picture, um, supposedly taken in Iran. I have no idea um, whether it's real or not. I'm not saying that these things don't happen, but you know their use and the context and the misinformation that goes with them is a problem. American Muslims are disloyal. I particularly like this cartoon. <laughs> Go back where you came from. I'm from Iowa. <laughs> um, but what does it remind us of? World War II. If you were Japanese, there was a sign right there. Of course, if you were Japanese, you may have been interred into a camp. All right. And I know that there were a number of my Muslim, a number of, of, of friends who were really worried after you know, the, the bombing, the 9-11 bombing of, of would there be this kind of a backlash? I mean, you know, I must give, give uh, credence to President Bush who came out right away and said, this is not Islam, this is a hijacking. I certainly appreciate that the President, whoever it was, would make a statement like that. Um, we did hear examples. There, were, there wasn't as much as I expected, actually. I know sometimes uh, Sikhs were attacked because obviously they're Muslim because they look like Muslims. Um, it was a case in New York of a, of a Native American who was told to go back to her country. They thought she was a Muslim. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, this is from a, this is a very interesting, uh, you know, th there are many, many of these apocalyptic scenarios, fundamentalist apocalyptic scenarios. My favorite is Joel's Trumpet. And he has, all three of these books are on Amazon. Islamic Antichrist, Mideast Beast, and why we left Islam. Okay, you can get all of those. Um, and the idea that, you know, Bible prophecy says that it's Muslims that are the Antichrist, and they're going to be destroyed by Jesus. Um, and, and this is what uh, Joel says here, just so you know what's going to happen. Um, the Psalm 80, I haven't read Psalm 83. Anyone have it memorized? I, trying, does Psalm 83 talk about a war? Maybe, I don't know, maybe I missed it. That's the only passage in the Quran that I didn't memorize. I mean, in the Bible. That's very oh, okay. <laughs> well, now you've got a reason to do it, because this could happen. The Battle of Gog, uh, well, of, of Magog is, is actually correct. I mean, Magog is, well, that should be the other way around. Magog means Prince of Gog. But somehow Gog and Magog get into two different countries uh, in the way people think about it. It should be Gog and whatever. Will result in the complete annihilation of most Muslims in the Middle East, and Islam as a religion will dry up and fade away, right? But it's not some oddball prophetic interpretation. Unfortunately, I think he's right that it's widely taught in a lot of Bible schools and, and evangelical and, and, and still avowedly fundamentalist and certainly by people like this. Um, anyway, here you can see Gog and Magog and the Arab allies coming down and whatever. This is not new. In fact, none of the stuff that, that uh, Jack Chick was talking about is new. Uh, if you've ever read Piers Plowman, which is a 14th century um, fascinating English account by William Langland, he talks in there about Muhammad, Muhammad being a priest, a Catholic priest who was a renegade and who wanted to be Pope. And when he couldn't become Pope, he went to Syria and he pulled a a dove, he did these magic things. He pulled a dove out of his ear and he started, started Islam. This idea that Catholicism and Islam were intertwined even before Protestantism, even before Luther and Calvin, you can find in a number of sources. I pulled one out from 1843. A few years ago, I was at, at Oxford doing some research on, on apocalyptic scenarios um, in, in some of the early texts that they had, and I ran across this. And here you see that, and I thought this was just marvelous because, so here is a Turk using firearms, and of course, there's Revelation 9.17. Do I need to say any more? You see? It's clear? Obviously, Muslims are the fifth and sixth trumpets of Revelation. That's from 1843. You can find it for any year you want. Um, jihad is against non-Muslims, and this is a central belief and common practice of contemporary Muslims. And you, if you go into Amazon and you put the word jihad, you will hit the jackpot. Um, my favorite here, the, 
Hasbrola, if, if you have kids and you've bought toys, you know why that's funny. Uh, Jihad Joe, anyway. Um, Muslims want to take over the world. I think the image speaks for itself. These are all images that are readily found on these Islamophobic sites. And um, this is what's going to happen um, very soon. Um, here you see um, what the world is currently. There's the Muslim Ocean over there. I didn't know the Arabian Sea went quite far that south, but that's okay. Uh, and after 100 years, of course, the whole world will be, will be Muslim. Okay. This is obviously not put out by a Muslim. Um, I wanted to say something positive because we've been doing a lot of negatives. Um, a Facebook site uh, called Americans Against Islamophobia. Um, and, and this is great because so many young people are, are into Facebook. Of course, it's a needle in a haystack when you think of the, of the I don't even want to hesitate, I hesitate to say how many Facebook pages there must be out there, but it's certainly in the millions. Um, informed comment, many of you probably know the work of Juan Cole, who for a number of years has been providing um, perceptive analysis of, of the Middle East and Islam. Um, I draw attention to Tabsir that myself and uh, um, several other individuals are involved with. Omid Safi's lovely phrase, what would Muhammad do? Okay. Um, and then when I was, at one point I was president of the Middle East section, just like my colleague John Anderson here, uh, of the American Anthropological Association, and I started a journal called Cyber Orient. Um, and it was sort of a fly-by-night thing at first, but it now is an official journal of the American Anthropological Association, and it's um, online, cyberorient.net, combined with digital Islam at, at uh, Charles University in Prague. Uh, and my colleague, Vitz Sisler, uh, we co-edited it. And then for those of you who are interested, really interested in Islam on the Internet, um, you have John Anderson here who's written quite a bit, but you also have Gary Bunt who's written several books, but I strongly recommend his I Muslims Rewiring the House of Islam. It's a really extraordinary study, and it's on your, your list there. So I thought I would, I would end with just a couple of, of points and then open it up for your questions. Um, and this is my um, minbar, it's a good minbar here, minbar manifesto. Uh, what then can we do? The, 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 the Islamophobia on the internet is rife. There is no question about it. And we can't take it off. Um, we can emphasize, and some of these things are sort of obvious, the historical and contemporary diversity of Muslim views. Um, we were talking, John and I were talking earlier about Abdul Hamid Zain, um, an Egyptian who was a, and, and a Muslim who was professor of anthropology at Temple. Uh, and he wrote a very provocative article in the 1970s arguing that certainly as anthropologists, and I totally agree with this, I don't study Islam. I couldn't begin to study such a vast subject. I study Islam's small eye. I study what I can see, what I can read, what I can talk to people about. I think it's a very powerful concept. He's not denying Islam. He's just saying, what is it we're studying? It's the diversity. It's a very diverse religious faith. We need to create sites. I've done that. Other people have done that that respectfully counter this Islamophobic material. I mean, so at least maybe someone would find that there's a counter to Jihad Watch. I think there is a counter to Jihad Watch. I think I might have put it on there. I know I'm preaching to the converted here, but certainly I think interfaith efforts are absolutely necessary and real dialogue between individuals of different religious faiths. Uh, and recognizing that, you know, no religion is pure. And, and, you know, that's a ridiculous argument, right? But what can we learn from each other to make our lives mutually better off? And finally, and uh, this is sort of in response to, uh, I don't know whether he was fishing or not, Robert Spencer, um, I would never debate them. I would never give some person like that uh, a venue, a forum. I, I just wouldn't do it. So, Great, thank you. I open it up for questions. Thank you very much. Yeah.